Are you recording? Whew. You can do this. We got this. Okay, okay. Okay, let's go. All right. Hello, everybody. My wonderful friends, PTA. It's Ben Horsley, Communications Director for Granite School District. I hope you're having a wonderful day of training. Yay, training! Um, so, I'm not there. I mean, I'm here, but I'm not because I'm climbing a mountain with a bunch of scouts. So, if I don't come back on Monday, please send out a search party. Um, Sydney asked me to do some things for you guys, and I wasn't going to be able to come to the training because I was going on this hike to King's Peak, and, you know, that was dangerous and everything, but she still was like, you got to help me out. So I'm making this video because I love you guys, and I wanted to give you the PTA fundraising reminders that you guys need. So uh, this is a very brief presentation. Um, I have given you a nice little handout with a little pig on one side and a megaphone on the other, and I'm going to go through all of this and just a little bit of this for your benefit today. So, uh, just to start us off, we're here doing fundraiser reminders, okay? We're going to talk a little about insurance as well. We'll get to that in a moment. First and foremost, fundraisers in Granite School District. There are three approved school-wide, not individual fundraisers, school-wide fundraisers that are permitted annually in Granite School District. One is for the school directly, one is for the PTA, and one is for some sort of charitable cause, and that could be a coat drive, it could be raising food for the food bank, whatever you like. So one of these, as you can see, is for PTAs and or PTOs, um, and you have the opportunity to raise some funds for your purposes in Grand School District and the support that you offer our students. In addition to those fundraisers, clubs and organizations are also allowed to do an annual fundraiser in addition to their those school-wide ones for their individual fundraising needs. The band going to California to perform or the Rose Bowl, I don't know. You get what I'm saying. They have the opportunity to individually fundraise for that purpose above and beyond these fundraisers. It's important to understand that the reason we have these policies in place is that we are so concerned that a free public education is actually free and that we don't want to put too much of a burden upon our parents and family members and people who might buy cookie dough otherwise. Um, so we have these policies in place to ensure that we're not always hitting you up for money. Um, regardless, our fundraisers should never interfere with classroom time. Um, I, we always want to make sure that those activities are being done outside of school time because obviously our main mission here in Grand School District is to educate your children. So I've listed those items here on your little handout. School-wide fundraiser for the school, one for a charitable cause, one for the PTA. I'm going to go into some other principles of fundraising. The foundation can provide fundraising opportunities in our schools. And uh, they can sponsor your fundraising projects. You can work with our Granite Education Foundation. They're a great resource. They can be your primary charitable cause at a school level. To be clear, the school fundraiser for the school and the charitable one are chosen by the school, not the PTA. But the PTA does have discretion over its own fundraiser with the principal's permission. Now, the principal sits on the board of your your PTA locally, so that shouldn't be a problem. They should be part of the conversation, but there's some reasons that's in place, and it's in, mostly to ensure that our policies are adhered to. We do have passive fundraisers, so I'm talking about two different types of fundraisers. There's active fundraisers where our kids go out and they knock on doors and say, can you buy some cookie dough or get trap or can you buy a case of oranges? I'm on the football team, grunt. You get what I'm saying. So, but that's an active fundraiser, and then there are passive fundraisers. Now, passive fundraisers would be things like box tops or milk caps. It could be that Smith's card, what your local grocery store will donate so much of your, uh, your purchases back to the school. Some businesses will donate, you know, receipts back to the schools. There's Papa John's Pizza Nights, things like that. Those are all permissible. There's no restriction on them unless your principal says so. Now, obviously, they get to have some discretion over that. They want to make sure, again, that we're not overdoing it on the fundraising. 
Um, so anything that uh, passive fundraisers do not involve promotion or distribution of an entity's information, but rather involve the students bringing items to school, these can be done throughout the year without limitation with, of course, the principal's discretion with respect to that. So I listed that here. Passive fundraisers are allowed under the direction of the principal. Marketing information on those passive fundraisers may not be sent out by themselves. So if Bob's Tree Business wants to give you a discount and dump some money towards the school, we can disseminate that information at the school, just not by itself. Now we have all these other tools to get that information out. We have websites, we have Facebook, we have Twitter. Feel free to throw up your Papa John's Pizza Night on your marquee. That's great. That's all permissible. We're just not going to use students to disseminate that information, if that makes sense. Okay, I've kind of gone through that stuff. Let's keep going. Fundraisers. Now, these patronage-related business donations are considered passive fundraisers. I've already talked about a few of them. Papa John's Pizza Nights, Smith's Cards, those types of things. Remember, the information has to go home in other means. Social media, websites, it can't go by itself. And the principal has ultimate discretion over that. Information should be limited to just what the, the fundraiser is about. It shouldn't be a, a large marketing piece for the business itself. And uh, there's obviously some reasons for that. Our kids are not to be used for advertising. That's not what we're here to do. So that's why we have that rule in place. A few more items for you. Um, unless my TV turns off. That was really weird. Okay. Just a little glitch. No problem. PTA related fundraisers. Okay. Now we're back to your fundraiser. You get one a year. If you don't make any money, better luck next year. Oh, well. Okay. Um, so we're not going to, if you don't make a lot of money, sorry, don't do that one next year, okay? Uh, PTA-related fundraisers. Now, I want to be clear, this is your policy. This, all the text on this slide is PTA guidelines. They're not Granite School District. They're not specific to us. I put them in this presentation to remind you what your policies say. PTAs do not exist to raise money. They, uh, they raise funds to exist as a PTA, Membership drives are not considered fundraisers. So we will always let you set up a table and try to increase your membership because we know that inherently benefits our school. Um, so you can do that. You should have a table at every parent, you know, teacher night, um, SEPs, other school activities, making sure you're encouraging uh, memberships to the, your local PTA. Donations are always welcome. However, a donation drive will count as a fundraiser. So if you are explicitly requesting donations, that is considered a, fu a fundraiser. However, if you're just saying on your website, hey, you can donate to us anytime, or, you know, good neighbor Bob wants to donate some money for a specific project at your school, the school can take that money without it being a fundraiser in and of itself. Now, selling peripheral items in an event does not count as a fundraiser. If you're selling t-shirts or snow cones, or cinnamon rolls at uh, the carnival. Here's the deal. When that is a fundraiser, it's because you have marked up the item so significantly that there's a massive profit. If that donut's costing me $5, or that snow cone's $4, instead of just really the cost to covering your, your expenses of doing business, that's the difference between selling items and trying to make a lot of money off of them. That would constitute potentially a fundraiser if you're marking up those items significantly. Does that make sense? Oh, good. Okay. I just got a few more items here for you. Only fundraising activities that offer at least a 40% return of proceeds may be considered for your school-wide fundraisers. If PTA wants to go with something less, that's not our business. That's your problem. But if you're, if you're part of that decision-making process, if you're providing input to the school on types of fundraisers, make sure there's a 40% profit margin. That some of those funds are, 40% of those funds are coming back to the school. Now, that doesn't mean you're always going to make 40%, but above and beyond, we don't want to use fundraisers that are effective. Uh, last, uh, again, schools should ensure against commingling of funds between the PTA and the school. This is due to state law and some other accounting practices. We don't want it to look like we're laundering money for the PTA's drug operation because we know it's a big problem. What I mean is, is when we do a book fair and the school's sponsoring the book fair, maybe the PTA is providing volunteers, the secretary should handle those funds. They should deposit it in the school's accounts 
and that should be handled that way. If the PTA is running the book fair, they need to deposit that money in their accounts and then provide some sort of donation back to the school if that's what they're doing. Uh, book fairs are not considered fundraisers. Totally, there are some benefits intrinsically back to the school or the PTA, and your school can decide what they want to do with that. Uh, regardless, we don't want to make it the school depositing money for the PTA and then cutting a check back to the PTA. We want to keep that a very nice wall, very clean. We don't want to get those commingling of funds. We've been audited in the past by the state, and it wasn't, it wasn't pretty, and you don't want to go there. If you have any questions about fundraising, you can contact me. There's my information. Don't look too, too hard because it's also on your paper right there at the bottom, and you can email me. Now, I want to talk about insurance just really quickly because insurance is, is not something we've had to worry about this last year. Um, if you do have questions about insurance, when you need insurance for an activity at the school, feel free to call me and let me know. The law has changed, and some of those things have changed. It's a little bit different, but hopefully it's a lot less confusing. Um, in reality, uh, we didn't have a lot of those issues this last year. I suspect you don't have a lot of questions about that this year. But if you do, you can always call me. You know how to get a hold of me. Hopefully I survived the trip and you'll be able to reach me on Monday. Um, last but not least, I want to talk about... Oh, Sydney wanted me to say that, hey, I'll talk about booster clubs another time. But I want to point out one thing. Um, with respect to booster clubs because a few years ago we did get audited by the state they had some concerns we made some policy adjustments based on some of the information you saw here that's why we do things the way we do um, a booster club and the PTA are considered the same thing we call them third-party support organizations now the, re the reality is is that the district needs to maintain some oversight over those funds whether it's a booster club or the PTA PTA has some built-in uh, components where the school district or the school itself can have some oversight over the funds because the, the principal sits on your PTA board. They get to review your budgets. They know what you're spending your money on. That's the oversight we're looking for. In the past, our booster clubs have not always had those types of oversight, and so we've had to implement some policies with respect to that. I'm not going to get into details on that. If you have questions, you can always call me. But Regardless, our third-party third support organizations do get some benefits because they are intended to help our schools. And so we do provide reduced rent rates. Our nominal cost, for instance, for PTA shouldn't be getting charged for a lot of, of building use unless there's personnel involved, which is why we do encourage you to use secondary schools where there's people already there at, the, at nighttime. That's a, a question for another day, but if you do have questions, you can call me. Um, obviously... We want to support the PTA. We love what you do for us. We want you to love what you do for we, us to love what you... Uh, just forget it. Anyway, I'm running out of water here and I'm dying. I'm going on a big hike tomorrow, so i got to retain a lot, as much water as I possibly can. So just one more thing and then I'll let you get on with your fun-filled day of training. And I know the treasurers in particular are super excited. Um, on the back of that form we gave you, here's the deal. 65% of news stories in local media with respect to public education are negative. And I know you know that what 65% of things that are happening in your school are not negative. They're very positive. But we're not doing a very good job of getting the word out with respect to things that are happening in our schools. We've got a crack communications team. We can write press releases. I can get the media to your school. If you'd only tell me when something cool is happening, and I can't put this all on the principals. They've got enough on their plates. PTA, you can help me out. If something cool is going on at your school, unusual, some cool instruction, you got a kangaroo to come and talk about reading, I need to know about these things, and you can contact the communications team at that information here. We want to hear about teacher recognition, student accomplishments, any sort of cool activity that's happening in your school, you won an award, whatever, let us know. There are different ways we can get that information out using our social media, getting the media out. We want to make sure we're getting those positive stories out and we're pushing those things out to our community so they know that their kid, your kids are getting a quality education here in Granite School District. Really appreciate all that you do. Look forward to working with you throughout the school year. If you get, again, you have questions, that's how you get a hold of me. It's on this form. Hopefully I don't die on this hike, but if I do, 
Please tell my family that I love them. Have a great day.